All right, my name's Ethan Wayne. This is Haircut Interviews with conceptual artist and musician, Mikey Kettinger. We are at Zago Studio Gallery in Solana Beach. You can find all of our websites in the bio below. Uh, but we're just gonna dive right into it. And Mikey's gonna tell us all about his artistic career. Sweet. So, um, first off, what kind of haircut do you want today? I want some length on the top still. I want the back and the sides, like, I don't know, maybe a half an inch. That's usually I take like half an inch guard. Do you want it faded on the sides or do you want it the same length? Uh, same length. Okay. And then you can see where it goes from long to afro. <laughs> and I just, that's the spot, basically. Got it. And so how much do you want off of your length? Uh, I really don't want any off of this part unless you just want to even it out or something. Okay. I don't really want to take much off of the longer parts. <clears throat> Sounds good. Cool. Okay, so what is going on with Mikey Kettinger's art world these days? <laughs> so much. Yeah? Been making lots of time to paint, draw, write, nice. make music, record music. It's been a really creative time for me. <clears throat> That's great. Yeah. It's been really cool. What have you been writing about lately? So many different things. Friends, animals inspire me a lot. Uh, I think the coolest thing I wrote lately that started as a poem and then I realized that it would be good music lyrics too, so then I made a, a song based off of it, was about kind of the state of America. Um, and the optimism that I feel despite the, the chaos. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It, it sort of is a similar story with me. At first, when everything went down, I kind of crawled into my hole and got melancholy, but as some time passed, I sort of figured out that I could still do a lot of the things that I love to do. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I'm seeing some people able to do that, yeah. and make the best of the extra time that they have and finding their priorities yeah. in, a, in a difficult time and others who are really struggling. And uh, I just, I feel really lucky that I've been one of the people who has made the best of it and, you know, been creative and got myself in shape and Yeah, for good. sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, real quick, I was like a little nervous before since this is the first one I've ever done. Did you say you wanted me to fade the sides in the back? No, or no, just, no fade. Just keep, keep it, it even. But it's just a, a number two guard, is that what we're saying? I usually do about a half an inch, I don't know what guard that is. Okay, yeah. But. Um, let's see. The three, that would be, is that too long? That's a three eighths. Three, yeah, no, that's that works, yeah. Three eighths of an inch is the, the number three on the clippers here. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, it's been a while since I've done a haircut interview. Um, they're interesting. So, <laughs> talking, cutting hair, recording, all that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a new medium. It's basically how you cut people's hair. You're conversing, but not with the camera. Yeah, but... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much when I'm cutting anyone's hair, it's like we become friends and they tell me way more things that I want to know about <laughs> their life. <laughs> well, there's an interesting thing about that too, where the the salon barber shop is known as kind of the gossip center where maybe, you know, things stay there in some degree. Whereas when you have a broadcasting element, you're completely doing the opposite of that. You're taking those stories and conversations and, and broadcasting them yeah. in a way that makes them no longer secret. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, as a good interviewer, I'd like to try and get as many secrets out of you as I possibly can. So, um, <laughs> why don't you tell me a little bit about your artistic journey, how did you get into the arts, why are you still in them, what motivates you? Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, wow. Well, 
as long as I can remember, I loved to draw and create, you know. What would you draw mainly? My first memories of drawing are of uh, trees and cars. I remember drawing tractor trailer trucks with a rectangle, you know, and then circles for the wheels. Yeah. And I stumbled upon some kind of a instructional drawing book that taught you how to draw different vehicles. Okay. And uh, so I got and really into that. And you're how old? Maybe three or four. Wow. I recall doing that and, and really liking it. And then- That's really young. Yeah. It was really clear to my family, who is not artistic at all, in my immediate family at least, that I was really, you know, different in that way. Um, and, but I just treated that as a, a fun hobby and a, um, a cool thing to keep me busy. Yeah. You know, and uh, I enjoyed that. I, I still try to maintain that uh, approach to making art. And that's what motivates me to make art still, is that I just love doing it. And that's the reason that I make art. Got it. And if it so happens that there are opportunities that present themselves in terms of teaching and making money and going and showing in places that are yeah a lot of people and that's great too but yeah so you're actually an art teacher as well correct yeah nice yeah so now I do private lessons but in the past I've taught college and elementary and middle school and um, you know guitar classes to groups of students wow so many different uh, realms of teaching and I, I love it very much nice. So, how many students do you have right now? Right now I have three students who I just meet one-on-one. -on -one, um, ages nine to 80. Okay. Yeah. And what can, you, what can you tell us about their artistic journey and how you've helped them grow as an artist? Each of the students that I have right now are pretty different in their approach and in their goals. Yeah. But the thing that they all have in common is that they're enthusiastic okay. and they listen, uh -huh. which is every teacher's dream. Sure. And a very uh, rare thing to have your students really truly listen to you and believe in what you are teaching. Yeah. Um, but because of that, I think all of my students have gotten so good and they all were good when I, on day one. Yeah. We started working with them, but to see them go from good to really, really good is... Yeah, but they had their passion, but they wanted to really develop that passion and hire somebody like you. Yeah, exactly. To give them that guidance. And, you know, without without uh, the proper guidance, it's tough to grow by yourself, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, there's certainly lots of examples of creative people growing without guidance and, sure. and even growing Maybe even in, better right yeah sometimes in yeah. neglect even because yeah. uh because they just wanted to exactly they didn't need the guidance they just kept whittling away every day by themselves yeah i think that's true yeah you know with some people that's it doesn't it doesn't matter they can be self-taught and be great um, yeah but i mean at least for me and a lot of people that i know you know, that, that took me to a certain level, but having amazing teachers and mentors really can help you take it to a, to a new level. Yeah. That's awesome. So then you're in high school, you're thinking about your future, and did you know exactly what you wanted to do then, or... What'd you do after high school? Well, when I was about 16, up until then, art was just a, you know, an interesting hobby for me. Yeah. I didn't see it as a, a career. But then when I was about 16, I had the opportunity to go to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Okay. For a special, um, it's called- My the hometown, by the way, Chicago. Yeah. Right. Born and raised south of Chicago, Piatone, Illinois, Park Forest. <laughs> Represent. Friends with Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then, 
I did that program and going into that program, which brings amazing artists who are teenagers from all around the world. Yeah. And going into that, I was really intimidated and I thought, oh wow, you know, hopefully I can just kind of be good enough to even just not stand out as being, um, you know, the worst artist in this whole group. Sure. And then after doing that for a month, I was like, oh, actually, you know, I'm thriving and I love this and I'm definitely not, you know. And you were just 16. Yeah. That's, the, everybody who was there was, was like, yeah. you know, 16, 17, 18. They were all high school students, but taking a college class. Sure. And they were all, I mean, they were probably 95% students who were really serious artists. I see. And then some people like And then you were serious at that time as well. Well, that's what made me serious. I see. That's what being around, me. being around these passionate artists, these passionate young artists, made you fired up. Yeah, seeing their passion, but also knowing that I had the talent to be on that level. Yeah. Do you remember which techniques that you were focusing on at the time, or was it many? Yeah, it was. Uh, I specifically took a, a drawing and painting class that was intended for people who were good at drawing to learn how to paint. I see. And uh, I had never really painted. I probably had painted, you know, five times in my life before that. In, yeah. In elementary school or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that was a really intimidating situation, um, but when I felt that I could do it and my teacher, you know, believed in me and said, no, yeah, you definitely are talented. And he yeah. was a really tough teacher. Got it. Um, but that helped me to realize that, you know, I really did have a good passion for it and I had some skills. And then I Got it. grew really fast in that month and then from then on then I really decided that I wanted to go to college you know like you asked what I did after high school so yeah then I had decided I wanted to really try to study art in college and I got to go to the University of Denver with an art scholarship wow. right after high school um, because in high school they recognized you as a great artist or how did you get the scholarship yeah yeah I applied and I Got a you know partial merit based scholarship. Wow, and um, that was a great time in my life, and it was amazing. Things didn't work out at the University of Denver. I ended up transferring to Florida State, where I had a, a better academic merit scholarship. Got it. But then that's where I studied art and really got immersed and exposed to you know conceptual art and what art can be in addition to just painting and drawing. Yeah, and so can, can you define conceptual art for us? Conceptual art is just art that is based on ideas combined with techniques. Right. So the idea part being the emphasis, whereas yeah. a, you know, a realistic painting of a landscape um, is very technical, uh, but not conceptual as the emphasis. Gotcha. So I'm really into conveying ideas and provocative thought through my artworks. Gotcha. I see, I see. Um, I as well consider myself a conceptual artist. Paint as draw as well. Lots of hummingbirds. <laughs> yeah, um, you've been coming up with some cool ideas lately. Yeah, I've got a few series I'm working on. Pretty excited about I'm doing a um, hummingbird series is ongoing for the last six years and then I'm doing a blue abstract series I'm doing a series inspired by my niece called Mary Lynn um, and then I'm actually I'm also doing a a live uh, figure drawing series with charcoals kind of like great expectations or the Titanic so pretty excited about that What's the one with the, your niece? So when I was visiting my family a couple weeks ago in Chicago, I noticed that my mom had framed a handful of my niece's drawings and colorings. And I was like really taken aback by them and how like whimsical and fun they were. And so I just, while I was there, I said like, Mary Lynn, keep drawing, keep drawing, draw this, draw that. And she would, and then I, I took these 
pieces of paper and I took pictures of them and I'm gonna take them from, you know, small sheets of paper and I'm gonna paint them with my painting techniques that I've developed oh. on big canvases. So, sweet. Yeah, I like that idea. Just the fly in there. So. It's funny, man, I've never met another person named Mary Lynn, but I have an Aunt Mary Lynn. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You have a niece and I have an aunt. I don't think I've ever met another Mary Lynn. <laughs> it's not the most common name, clearly. No, and, and my niece got her name from my mother and my grandmother. My mother's name is Lynn, my grandmother's name is Mary. So they put the two together. That's interesting. It, it might be uh, a Chicago thing too, because my Aunt Mary Lynn is also born and raised in Chicago. Oh yeah? Yeah, so you also spent a bunch of time in Chicago. Yeah, definitely. Right? You, you were there at 16 at the Art Institute? Yeah, I studied at the Art Institute, which was mind-blowing and amazing. Sure. And that like, you know, set the path for what my life has become, so I'm always grateful for that. But um, I also lived in Chicago land, various places um, for well, like five to six years when I was a kid and when I was an adult. Yeah. And my, my parents grew up there and I have five aunts and uncles from there and yeah. many cousins and I, I do go there a lot and uh, I'm very familiar with it and it's a, that kind of Mentality is a big part of who I am for sure. Yeah. Would you say that Chicago feels like home? I would have said that maybe 15 years ago. Okay. I don't feel like that anymore. What I, feels like home now? Nowhere feels like home except Nowhere for, feels like yeah, home? Yeah. Now California feels like okay. home because I live here. Got it. Because I've lived so many different places. Yeah. And no one place really for that long. Yeah. I've never lived in any place longer than seven years. Yeah. Uh, and, and sort of, sort of like we were talking about the other day, is that here we are in the North County of San Diego, specifically in Solana Beach right now, and it sort of feels like we live in the Ferrari of the world. <laughs> I think that's how you put it, right? Uh, I did say that. Uh, <laughs> I said that to somebody else, and they they got a good reaction too. I said, oh, I got one something with that Ferrari of the. Yeah, and ever since you said that, I've been seeing way more Ferraris and Lamborghinis <laughs> cruising around. This is the area for the hey look at me cars. Yeah, this. If you were gonna have a Ferrari, what color would it be? That's As an excellent our... question. Uh, I think I'd go white. All right. White or silver? I like that. I'm pretty sure that that snowboarder snowboarder Sean White has a white Lamborghini. Nice. Well, maybe I can steal his. And he. He lives in Carlsbad, I think. I, I heard that he used to live uh, in our neighborhood in Encinitas. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, cool. But I also heard that he sold that place, but oh. I don't know how many houses the dude has. He yeah. probably has a couple houses. Probably. I haven't, I haven't heard or talked about that guy in a long time. Yeah. But great snowboard. It's looking good back here. All right, cool. Do a little taper on the neck. A taper means that the hair has like a gradual crescendo as it goes into the meat of the hair okay. versus like a straight line. Um, so people say, well, you want me to square it off? That's the opposite of a taper. So, you know, you put a bunch of different size guards and flick, 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 flick to get that gradual Taper down. Cool. Just don't give me any vanilla ice lines. Too late. I there was no mirror, so I have, I have no clue what's going on. I could look like a total moron. I thought you wanted to be the car of ice ice baby <laughs> in the side of your head. <laughs> that is a, a, you know, resurrected trend that people are putting the lines in their head. Yeah. I know. I, yeah, someone was just in here the other day, and he's like, this has inspired me to work on my musicianship. And uh, referring to what? Just being in the gallery? Yeah. Oh, nice. 
-hmm. And you had the lines just like vanilla. <laughs> well, that was like good. All right, send me your tunes. He was from L.A. Nice. Yeah. That is a cool thing about working in a gallery, man. That is, you know, a cool thing. People do come in and get inspired, and you get to for sure, you know, facilitate that and and observe that. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know what is that? Something pretty cool happened the other day, like right when they shut everything down from COVID. Um, well, this is more than the other day. It was like three months or so ago. <laughs> this young artist was doing art school in Italy, but he lived, he grew up in California. Uh -huh. And he came, but in the gallery, he's like, I don't know what to do with my life. I'm kind of lost. I was in art school. I was loving it. And now, like, I just don't know. And uh, so I was like, well, just keep painting, paint, 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 paint and post, build a website, post on Instagram, blah, 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 all that stuff. So he got all inspired and he paints all the time. He sells his painting on, on Instagram. He's got a website. He sent it to me. He sent me a bus of messages. He was like, thank you so much for inspiring me. That's great. Man. I'm so glad yeah. that I took your advice and I, you know, built my website and started painting and it didn't stop because I was stuck. Uh, that's really cool. That's a great story. Yeah, that, that dude's name is uh, Mason Hall. Okay. And I think his insta is like Mason Hall or Mason Hall Art or something like that. So yeah, I'd like to try it out. So that, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm glad I was able to encourage that young artist because you know getting stuck creatively is no fun for anybody. No. A lot of people just don't have enough other creative people or people who appreciate the arts in their life to, you know, keep that going too. Yeah, absolutely. Do you ever get stuck creatively? I definitely do, but not often. I, I've been really lucky to be inspired all the time. Yeah? Because... I think a big part of that is because I have embraced this idea of being a conceptual artist, so I, it, I can do painting, or I can do drawing, or I can do music, or I can do video, or I can do installation, so for sure, I'm constantly working on many different things. Yeah. So maybe you get a little tired of one project, you go to another? Exactly. Sometimes, so it's always new and fresh? Constantly working on more than one project at the same time. Yeah, I think that's also something I found in myself that works too. If I focus just on one thing, I have a tendency to get bored. Yeah. Hence, haircut interviews with Ethan Payne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd always thought it'd be pretty fun to cut people's hair and interview them, especially if they were interesting, like artists or celebrities, or, you know, just everyday hard-working American folks. <laughs> that can be very interesting, too. Well, you're doing it right now. How, is it? How fun is it on a scale of one to ten? So I'm having a great time. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Me too. Super, super good time. That's yeah, been a great day. We're at uh, Zago Studio Gallery here, Cedros Avenue, and sold three paintings yesterday, delivered and hung them by a credible artist from Montreal, Isabelle Bobien. And uh, super grateful for that in this, this uh, difficult economic time. People are beautifying their home right now. They're stuck there. They're doing the inside, the outside, increasing the value of their house. And, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen with our gallery, but it's just been super busy. And uh, one thing we do is um, right now we are doing a um, complimentary art curation consultation in people's homes. We'll take paintings there, put them on the walls, see if they like them, if they like them, they keep them. Um, but we normally would charge a couple hundred hundred dollars for that and you know right now we're just doing it to help people out and they love it they're like yeah you can I can know for sure if this painting works in my space before buying it and that's extremely comforting to art collectors so yeah that's very helpful yeah but uh, 
So, what's your music style? I don't think you've even told me anything about that. That's yeah, rock and roll, you know. It's uh, if you want to get into kind of the subgenres of rock music, you could call it art rock or psychedelic rock, indie rock. Yeah. You want to turn it up a little bit on your phone? Yeah, yeah sure. We got it playing in here. It's on Spotify. Are you, are you on YouTube as well? Or yeah. Okay. And what's the name? The project is called Mikey's Imaginary Friends. Oh, so, that's the name of your band. Yeah. Whoa. That's awesome. <laughs> when I was coming up with the name for my music back in 2006, all the ideas I came up with, I would type them in and go, okay, I want to make sure that there's no other band that already has this name. Yeah. And I don't remember what else I experimented with, but those were all taken. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like, what do I do here? If I put my own name in front of it, then it will be... You know, a lot less likely that someone else already has that name. So, sure. That wanted it sense. to be imaginary friends or something like that because it was me by myself recording everything, but it sounded like there were more people involved. Yeah. So, Mikey's imaginary friends. It became. That's a cool name. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know you. That was the name of your band. I just thought it was your Instagram handle for your artworks. Well, yeah. So, the old manager of my band. Caitlin uh, started calling me Mikey Imaginary when yeah. she, before she knew my last name. For sure. So I was like, oh, that sounds really cool because of me being the person from the band that she knew. So then that stuck, and I really like that name. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. So you wrote this song, obviously, we're listening to right now in the background music. Yeah. What's so this one called? This one is called Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman? Yeah. The Pat, football player yeah. that uh, yeah that died exactly serving our country. He's a marine, right? He was in the army. Okay. He was an army ranger. That's right. But yeah, he inspired this song. I, I was really moved by his story. Yeah. And um, it's cool, man. I nice. like this song. Well, thanks. It's. It reminds me of this band I've been listening to lately called Silver Sun Pickups. Oh yeah, I've heard that before. Have you? Yeah. People have, have told you me listened that. to them? Yep, I like them. Yeah. Sounds really this sounds sounds so similar to them. The way that I discovered that band is because someone said, Oh, you voice sounds like the guy from this band called Silver Sun Pickups. Have you ever wow. heard of them? And I was like, No, I don't know what that is. Not <laughs> just the not just your voice, but everything is similar. Not the same. Just yeah. the where you have it all blended together in harmony. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, I like uh, I like that band. That song, Lazy Eye, I love that song. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great song. I got a bunch of good songs. I've discovered some really cool bands, actually, uh, from people telling me, oh, your music sounds like this other band. Have you ever heard them? And yeah. At the time, either I was less familiar with those or dude i've got i've got your hair <laughs> all over my hands i'm oh gonna God. i'm gonna go um wipe this off in the meantime yeah. why don't you sing the song ice ice baby to everybody <laughs> i don't know that that's uh, allowed with the copyright no yeah i don't think so i think you got to pay royalties for that Last time you dealt with hair that was this uh, intense? Mm. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never on a guy, anyways. Um, I've had a bunch of like female hair jobs that were nightmares, of course. 
<laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to like men's hair, I spent so much time just now combing through your nappy weave. <laughs> and uh, just let that part over. So I'm gonna just take off a little bit, like okay. of the ends. Cool. Just kind of get them healthy again. I'm trusting your instinct, and I cannot see anything that you're doing, so it's all fun. It's it's uh, it's going really good. I'm I'm gonna say that your haircut is probably like a ten out of ten so far. <laughs> the sides in the back look incredible, and that length stupendous. The three eighths inch number three guard. Taper in the neckline. The number three guard, it's an underrated guard. I think that uh, giving it good depth. The power forward guard. <laughs> well, that'd be the three. small forward, the three. That's, right? You're right, yeah. No. Yeah, the three is the small forward, the four is the power forward. Mm -hmm. Basketball terminology. Yeah, five we'll, is we'll the center. go with that. Five is the center, four is the power forward, three is the four. small forward, two is the shooting guard, one is the point guard. All right. That's not how it worked in Piatone Varsity Basketball <laughs> with Mr. Maupin, but we'll go with it. With the coach that forbade you from dribbling. Yeah. So clearly, exactly. what does he know? Exactly. Yeah. No dribbling, no dunking, no, no fun. Dri no dribbling. How am I supposed to dunk the ball? No shooting threes, even though you were 50% <laughs> from the three point. So. No shooting threes, yeah. Unreal. It's all right, we still won the regionals for the first time in 40 years, and I did have a breakaway steal against Mantino. <laughs> At the other end of the court, dribbled down and dunked it. Mantino, that's a good rural Illinois high school name. Mantino, yeah. I like that. It's looking really good. Sweet. You want me to trim your beard at all, or what do you think? If you want, you can. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> I don't really want to. No. <laughs> leave just, the beard. Let's just leave it. <laughs> kind of. I kind of want to go home at this point. <laughs> um, it's been really nice talking with you. Uh, I'm really glad you came into the gallery. You're pretty cool. <laughs> I'll probably see you around, I think. Not sure what's going on right now with this part of your hair. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Just got a little bit sticking out here. I don't think the last person made a straight line in this hair. <laughs> well, you know who the last person in the cut was. Oh, that's right, you did it. <laughs> that's, that's right, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. The last probably 10 cuts were from me. Oh, I see. Well, let's throw that three guard back on and see if we can make a little straighter line. <laughs> and now that we've got a head full of coconut oil, this could be a complete disaster. <laughs> and you might want your money back. <laughs> oh, you know, that happens sometimes in art. Have you ever really messed things up in art and like felt bad about it? Or how do you deal with failing creatively? I have failed so miserably so many times yeah. that I've come to learn that that is... It's just kind of part of it, right? It's totally part of it, and that's the way that's the best way that you learn. Yeah. And if you have, you know, like, you know, I did a lot of uh, higher education, very formal training where I have very intense critiques. Yeah. And, you know, the first couple of intense critiques they definitely hurt me a lot more than the last couple because you yeah. learn to not take that personally and to value that yeah and um, it's really beneficial if you can do that if you can actually listen to criticism um, and not let it affect you emotionally then it can be extremely helpful that's awesome dude yeah what a great lesson for people who are not artists as well. Yeah. It's just something anybody can take with them right in their pocket. Yeah, it applies to every facet of your life, really. Yeah. 
Fail forward, everybody. Fail forward. <laughs> like your boy, Bob Ross says, there are no mistakes. Only there are no mistakes. mistakes. Oh, by the, by the way, I've been playing Bob Ross impersonating every Thursday at 6. You can check out my website to see the next Zoom info. It's a Zoom thing. It's called Happy Hummingbirds. I, I teach you how to paint a hummingbird every Thursday at 6. Um, you spell hummingbirds H-U-M-M-N-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Happy hummingbirds dot com. So, um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? I think I'm pretty much done. No, I want everyone to feel good and to be creative. Make art every day. Make art every day, everybody. All right, this is uh, Haircut Interviews with Ethan Wayne, the Zago Studio Gallery in Solana Beach, Mikey Gettinger. You can find all our social stuff, media, social media stuff, and websites in the bio. Check them out, check out our pages, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, man. You got it. And the song just faded out, too. Let's see. <laughs> Uh oh, I hope it didn't stop playing. <clears throat> Can you try to turn that off? I'm not sure if it turned off or what.